Hey guys, today I'm going to show you what it takes and how much it costs to fix Brandon's laundromat. He has multiple of his laundromat machines down and I figured it would be a good idea to show you what goes on in fixing these machines. I had to reshoot walking inside the laundromat because the first thing that happened was a customer that just left the store flagged me down because Brandon's coin pusher was robbed of like $30. So instead of repairing the machines to start off with, we're dealing with a thief which was covered in another one of Brandon's videos. There's a lot of background noise in the laundromat, so some of the audio is going to be muted. If you want to hear real, authentic sounds from the laundromat, just turn on daytime TV like Judge Judy or something. Right now about five washers are down, one needs a new timer that was destroyed when someone rammed a drill bit into the coin housing and caught the entire unit on fire. The other units, I have no idea what's going on. See every time a machine is down, it means that the potential for making money could be gone. He fortunately has a lot of working machines, but there's always the risk that if someone's <coughs> favorite machine's down, they won't stay and clean their clothes. I'm going to start on this bank of washers here and see what we can get into, but first I'm going to need some money for the machines to try them out. Now just so you know, this video is sponsored by Brandon's Wallet for the change machine, which kind of means it's really sponsored by your YouTube ad cash. So thanks for liking and subscribing this video. Once I get the coins in hand, I'm going to go back to the machine, try to turn it on, and then take the cover off to see what the machine is doing from the inside out to see why it's out of order. Here's a fun fact. I was the one that reset the Monarch coin acceptors, the ones that you're seeing me put the change in, to make sure they took $2.50 per wash. I did like 20 of these machines for Brandon, only to find out that there was a hidden case of these coin acceptors that the former laundromat owner had already bought to increase the prices. Hooray! This one fills with water, but now I gotta test another three in this row to see which ones work and which ones don't. Once I put the money in the machine, I gotta take it apart and see why it's not working, assuming it runs at all or it doesn't. The first machine that I'm looking at started okay, so I gotta take the front plate off and see if something's stuck in it while it runs the cycle. So the machine's live and I'm seeing what's going on. But with machines so close together, it takes extra time on what should be like a two minute job to get into the guts of the washer. So I'm kind of fumbling around trying to get it open. So in the end, what would have been maybe a two minute job gets fast forwarded through the magic of YouTube. In the end is a seven minute process for just one of these Speed Queen washers. And guess what? The machine seems like it's running just fine. It's agitating to clean imaginary clothes that aren't there, but that means the washer belt at least is working. So far, so good. <coughs> Here's the guts of the washer, the motor, the belt, the transmission too. It's all running perfectly fine. Maybe the customer's wrong on this machine, and Brandon just lost money on a service call. Once the machine goes into sp final spin though, we'll know for sure. Now we're on to machine number two, which ends up being way, way easier to open up because the machine's actually spaced out a little bit. Now on to machine number two. This one won't spin or agitate and it's really evident why. The washer belt is totally destroyed on the unit and it does need replaced. Also, I'm pointing at the motor just as a frame of reference in case it's bad too, but the belt's absolutely destroyed on this unit. It is a common wear part on top load washing machines and replacing them sucks on Speed Queens as the whole motor assembly needs to come off of it just to replace a single belt. After the video, the belt we were told to order from the machine ended up being wrong, which resulted in the drain pump getting destroyed. It isn't going to cost Brandon any more money than a $15 belt, as it's on me. Fortunately though, I have a spare motor and pump at my shop, so it doesn't cost me too much either, but it does cost him downtime. 
with machine two diagnosed, I go back to the first machine to look at it, and it looks like it's starting to go into its high speed spin mode, which proves that Brandon had a customer that wanted their money back. Sadly, a lot of machines go down for trivial or even baseless problems, which causes money to the laundromat. Now two units are either fixed or diagnosed. So what does everything cost so far in parts and labor? With one machine fixed and another diagnosed, Brandon's right now at $35 in expenses so far. He's gotten away with a little cost so far in the video, but it's not always that cheap. This is one of his fancier, newer, popular Speed Queen front load washers, the one he collects a bunch of coins on the videos. It's way easier to take apart to get to basic things like the drain pump. Instead of seven minutes to get the panel open, it takes like 15 seconds with the drill gun in one hand and a camera in the other. On top of that, a front load washer like this is built to last a lot longer than his top load washers. A typical top load washer at a laundromat has a lifespan of maybe five to 10 years, Whereas a front load washer like this is designed for 10 to 20 years of use at three uses per day. Somehow, this drain pump died a few weeks ago and I replaced it about a week before this service appointment. We think that one of the laundromat customers put dish soap in the unit causing the drain pump to overwork and burn itself out. Unlike a $15 belt, this OEM pump, new, was $120 from Amazon with one day delivery so we could get it up and running really fast for Brandon. What's absolutely crazy about that price is the pump is made by the same Chinese factory that makes basic drain pumps for GE electric washers. You know, the same kind that cost $40 from another retail shop. The only external difference is that the housing is larger to accommodate this commercial Speed Queen washer. It's too bad because I had a box of the old GE type in my shop that could not be used. Now the two final washers of the day. Neither of these washers are going to run, and they have water inside the drums. If you put quarters in them, nothing happens. They will not run. But before we can open up these washers and take a look underneath, we got to back the video up because there's a major problem. It's really hard to see, but on the floor of this laundromat is raised concrete about two inches. And right above that concrete base is angle iron that runs in front of every single washer in this washer bank. It's just tall enough to make sure that you can't open up any of Brandon's washers for servicing. I spent the next 20 minutes of the video with a pry bar lifting up one of the two washers full of water to try to open the unit up from the bottom. Whoever installed these had no clue what they were doing, and any of the washers that need serviced, the angle iron has to be removed. At this point, I have to leave for other work, and more machines end up going down in the next day or two, requiring my team of techs to come in and get multiple machines up and running. This is the video stating showing this dryer is engaging. This will be the third time close the door. As you can see, Brandon, it is running, and it is dryer banks run into constant problems that need fixed. When he took over the laundromat, basically every machine was down or damaged, but these dryers took extra care to get up and running, and they've been a source of constant problems. A possible reason? These dryers were made in 1979. The Lodestar 3030 dryer is a staple of old laundromats, but critical parts are starting to get scarce and aren't always cheap. calibration on it now to make sure when you push the bar in that it operates as you can see it is in use Brandon and as you can see it is running water this is the one where the timer had been drilled through the top three dryers and one washer now down on this service call go okay Brandon I found on the glide one of the mount screws was broke off 
I did find a new $4 glide and replaced this one with and got it back in. Found up here, we had a pop circuit breaker inside. That's why the unit wasn't coming on. We are gonna put our $4 in to run with the new test cycle to make sure that everything engages like it's supposed to properly. When it comes to repairing the laundromat, you only have two choices. You fix it yourself or you pay someone else to fix it. Every time a service call is made, it's money out of Brandon's wallet. However, the costs to keep the laundromat up and running aren't catastrophic compared to his competitors. Another laundromat in the area was looking to be sold and it provided its profit and loss statement which showed that they were spending over $5,000 a year just on service calls and that in excluded any sort of debt servicing for the units. Fortunately, Brandon got away with a repair bill of just under $300 for everything done by myself and my techs in this entire video. They got four dryers and four washers up and running just in one day. Oh, and the two washers that were filled with water that I couldn't fix earlier in the video, here's why they weren't working. The previous laundromat owner installed an extension cord and outlet for the washers to run off of. Bad choices by the old owner are continuing to cost the laundromat money here and there. Here's where we're at with all of December's bills totaled for the laundromat and how Brandon was invoiced. Labor totaled $225 for the hours that he had to pay out on service calls for the washers and dryers. Then for parts, he had to pay another $200 between the drain pump, timer, and then the belts for the washers. My techs had to install more parts to his machines than what I'm invoicing for, but Brandon already had them in a storeroom that the former owner had left him. That means a total of $445 for December. It's higher than other months that he's ran the laundromat, I think, that he's had to pay out. But a lot of the machines went down in December, but got repaired. A lot of the machines in his laundromat are older and are really starting to wear down, so hopefully he can replace them soon and not have to pay out so much money.